ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅನದರ್ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಗೈಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸೀರಿಯಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವೈದಾಂತ ಹೌ ಕಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೋ ಫ್ಯೂ ವ್ಯೂಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಡೈನಮೈಟ್ don't you understand this is the fundamental source of the most powerful teaching so this vedanta sutra demolishes i mean absolutely nukes every other philosophy every other form of self realization because it's so direct and to the point uh huh Now the ninth sutra is simply svapyayat and svapya of course means sleep and uh really the meaning is on account of resolving or merging in one's own self the expanded translation is on account of the individual soul merging in its own self or the universal self referred to as the sat in deep sleep the pradhan cannot be denoted by the word self so every philosophy makes the mistake of thinking that the pradhan or the material elements are supreme or eternal in the creation and yet this is an error because of our experience any scientist will argue for hours and days <laughs> on the basis of some kind of experiment or measurement of the world out there but they don't ever take a look at their own experience what happens every night when we fall asleep watch yourself observe you lie down relax let the mind drift sooner or later it begins to start making up its own little stories huh and you gradually move into a world a different world where there's no rules there's a mind but no ego there's an identity but there's no physical body nevertheless one perceives one's form and others as well and has all kinds of adventures in the dream state and then one goes into deep sleep in deep sleep there is no mind no world no god no phenomena no nothing deep sleep is so pleasurable and so restful that if we don't get it for even a few days we go crazy so what is it about deep sleep that's so special well ramana maharshi expressed it as the soul is resting in the lap of brahman so without this transcendental pleasure we we can't go on we can't live and one of the things about self realization is of course that it brings us directly in touch with this pleasure it brings us into this state the fourth state of consciousness where all the other three exist simultaneously if you observe very carefully as you fall asleep and when you wake up you'll see that you move through several different states of consciousness and the thing is all these states deep sleep dreaming and waking have one thing in common and that is awareness so the awareness the basic objectless unconditioned 
pure awareness that is the foundation of consciousness and everything else is the gateway or the connection between all these other states of consciousness. So as you move from deep sleep into dreams, as you move from dreams into waking, every morning you will go through the fourth state, Turiya, which is the naturally effulgent state of pure objectless awareness, self-realization, enlightenment, Brahman. So if you simply observe that, if you simply see that, if you just allow yourself to experience it, even one time, then you will know. <laughs> you will know what? You will know that Brahman, the source of everything, is sentient. Has to be. Because we are sentient the individual beings. Therefore, when we merge into Brahman in deep sleep, Brahman must also be sentient, must also be of the same quality, the same character, the same basic nature. Isn't this just obvious? Huh? Yet the creationists, the elementalists, Sankhyas, huh? the Purva Mimankshas, those who believe that karma is supreme. And I include in these, by the way, the modern scientists and philosophers, the materialists, who think that the material energy is supreme, is everything. Uh, and it somehow is going on uh, mechanically like a clock. <laughs> Let them observe themselves and see whether or not this whole material universe persists during sleep? And of course, the answer is it doesn't. So if it doesn't persist during sleep, how can we say that it's supreme? The one thing that does persist during sleep is awareness. Well, you might say, I don't remember anything when, when I was in deep sleep. But afterwards, you feel, ah, yes, I was in good deep sleep and I had a restful evening. Isn't it? Just because there's nothing to be aware of doesn't mean that we're unaware. We're still quite capable of perception. It's just there's, there's nothing to perceive except the self. So if we think the self is nothing or we... Uh, like the scientists try to deny the reality of the subjective, then we can never fully understand ourselves, the present, the world, God, creation, or any of it. Uh, but just this one insight brings it all together. Just this one truth that the self the being, the individual, merges into Brahman, merges into the Sat, huh? the eternal, the real, during deep sleep at night. Let's just get this one fact straight. Huh? And I, by that I mean as a matter of daily observation and experience. And by this you will come to understand the whole of Vedanta, the whole of the Upanishads and Vedas. This is the secret. It's such an open secret. Look at it. It's out in front of you every day and night. But because you've been told a different story, you don't believe your own experience. Now, this is the craziest thing in the world. Isn't it? We have been told this story about the world. The world was created by God a long time ago. And uh, nobody has seen him since. <laughs> and now it's just going on like a clock <laughs> wound up. 
<laughs> and thrown into the abyss of time and space. <laughs> no, no. The creation occurs every moment because of the consciousness of Brahman. There is nothing but Brahman. There is no world, really. There are no objects, really. There is no such thing as what we call consciousness, really. What really is, is that the being of Brahman is projecting a thought. And because Brahman is pure awareness, the thought seems to be real. Even to great sages and devotees, even to enlightened people, the world appears to be real as long as we're in touch with waking consciousness. The difference is the enlightened person can withdraw from waking consciousness into samadhi. And what is samadhi? It's the fourth state beyond waking, dreaming, and sleep where all three stages of consciousness are available simultaneously. At the same time, one can be awake, the mind can be off dreaming in its little dream boat, and we are plunged into the profound silence of deep sleep, uh, satisfying rest and withdrawal from all material action and so on. And in that state, where we see all these three states of consciousness simultaneously, then we can understand how the self creates the world simply by being it. There's no consciousness necessary because he is being the world. You understand? It's just like... You don't need to be conscious of yourself because you're being yourself. In the same way, the Supreme becomes the being of the whole world. And in that, the creation occurs and all the apparent phenomena. By the, word, by the way, there's a word for this, epiphenomena. An epiphenomenon is something that seems to exist, but doesn't really it's only an artifact of perception. So we see all these phenomena in the world, like our bodies, our minds, the ego, all the stories about life and the world and people and events. Huh? All these lies, <laughs> all jumbled up in one big package we call life, the world. And then we try to make sense of it. But because we've already been fed a pack of lies, <laughs> we can't really tease out the truth until we're told this one simple thing, that the soul, the being, the self, the real I, merges with Brahman in sleep. Well, I do that. You do that. Everybody does that down to animals and even insects, huh? maybe even plants too. They sleep. Why? Because this world can never give the happiness and satisfaction of Brahman. We need our identity with Brahman to stay alive, to stay sane, huh? to exist at all. We need that connection with the source. So when we go to sleep at night, we relax deep into the source of everything. And we temporarily give up the creation of this material existence, the body, the mind, and so on. And this is our rest. This is our renewal. And we can have this rest and renewal at any time, simply by cultivating the observation and experience of these three states of consciousness. That's what life is all about. And once you get that, 
It's like learning to ride a bicycle. Uh, you don't need the training wheels anymore. <laughs> like learning to ice skate. Huh? Once you get up and you can keep your balance and flow, ah, it's beautiful. It's like flying. Mastery of life. Mastery of being. This is Vedanta. Aung Tatsat. Aung Harihi Aung.